This might again be one of those tactics to use as a shield because Scorpion G is quite tall. We'll have to see if that is the case because we saw um, Eclipse do that with the, with the boar stick. Perhaps uh, Team Efficiency has a plan with the Scorpion G. Uh, Kazna, I mean, sorry, Elevate is going to be playing with Triple Miles, Double 50B, Double T10. It's a little bit of an aggressive lineup coming out from them. They're just going to play standard control. Uh, Ma is going to be playing that Scorpion. Interesting to see where he's going. Nope, so far he's not being used as a shield. That's interesting. So, so far they're doing the pretty standard 1-2 line defense. JT, Kronowski going down there with the down 1-2 line. Uh, Maus is going to be covering. Okay, interesting use for Scorpion G. It obviously has uh, a fairly good gun on that one. It, yeah. it can punch through mouses on the side, even if it, it's showing the weak spots from the front, they can obviously punch through that as well. It's one of the one of the new breed of premium tanks, the Scorpion. Uh, quite a popular tank here in the 77. It does pop up occasionally. Um, you see it getting used in Cliff, for example, quite a lot of the time. Now, Daki, with this lineup here on team efficiency going quite heavy down the left hand side, down the rails, does that give them good coverage for, for the map? Is that kind of set out the tactics for Elevate and let them know where they are? Well, it's a fairly standard uh, tactic here from team efficiency, I'd say, um, with a lot of tanks in one two line. They're kind of covering everything at the same time, but Elevate is starting off like uh, you can see a normal attacking team on Himmelsdorf. They're taking control over the entire map. And they're now starting to group up for that eight-line move with two times coming from the hill. Safa should be seeing that one, though. Okay, now the external double seven and Wohax are now going to push up the Banana Road. We see the Doma above them there, sitting beside the castle. Viewpoint with Fox Masters. Here comes the heavies going through the Banana Road. Uh, Godin Perpetz holding position at the bottom, and they're stopping but let's see Daki what can you explain well, here let's just go over the initial strategy at first to so this guy over here this E3 is covering off this little crossing over here so nobody can go there then you have the 50B covering like this for anybody coming through here right uh, sometimes it's been done in the meantime not very, not very important these two tanks are supposed to cover as well towards this so everything is focused on one two line right in the beginning they have Safa over here uh, we saw that before being done by a team but that there was an E3 over here that yep. destroyed that. Obviously, this is not available for the side of Elevate, so that's not an option. He could play there for free. He spotted the tanks from Elevate coming down here. So now we can see that the rotation from Team Efficiency all the way back to here, so they can focus on defending the number two base. They do not have anybody here, though. So in essence, what will happen most likely is when Elevate takes that gap, we will see a massive counter push coming out from the side of Team Efficiency to try and stop that one. We still have the... 50B of Gronowski down the bottom as well. He can face off against God Emperor Brett, who himself is in a 50B, so might get a head to head battle between the two auto loaders down there. Now, Wallhax is starting the cap and he has been defended by External, and it looks like Nitz beside him as well. Dodoma coming around the top side as well. Ball Gnaze and Scale coming around. The E3 in that window we always expect in the second window there. Safi's now coming along the D line to give additional coverage for his team, but Oxmanthus is waiting there to, to snap out into him with God Emperor Brett behind him. Yeah, some nice damage being done on the crossing here. They are going to abandon that cap because obviously this is what we talked about for team efficiency is that counter push across AB line. So now they have to back off because armor for armor, team efficiency is in the lead here. Not HP by but when party gets there, these three tanks could be in severe trouble. Bollock has been focused there as the double mouse are able to shoot out into him and his wall hacks. Now Safi has to be careful because Oxmanthus now is pushed up into the fountain in the middle of the courtyard. God Emperor Brett rotating round. Uh, scale and external trading here. And uh, no coverage over the side because the dome is all the way around at the back. He is sitting in the cap circle as well. Beside well, Wally as well. So it's a double cap at the moment. Um, elevate. Quite sneaky here because team efficiency kind of need to send somebody up to the A line to do a little bit of a reset there as well and push the old Dodoma's actually backing off. Yeah, but Elevate is up so much HP right now. These tanks from team efficiency have bled a lot. They have to make the counter play and they have to make it now around the corner, push into Elevate. And here comes the push as everyone's going into this corner. They're throwing all the tanks. Scale is being focused at the moment. Safi's getting shot at as well. Bollock Nays doesn't have a much HP as well. This is a great trade for Elevate as they take the first tank. Wallhacks drops Scale on the T10. Now, let's see, Party's taking a lot of damage in the E3. Safi looks to be the next one to drop. He's down to 118 health. He's Amorak as well as JT. Takes down Nitz, 
Team Elevate is tank for tank at the moment, but Elevate have all the HP to trade Daki, and it looks like they're wrestling control of this match quite easily. Yeah, not just in the AB line they're winning the fight, they're also winning it in the DE line, where there was Safa and Mao, and that's Scorpion G. Safa obviously not going to do much against Ox Mattis and God Emperor Bread in those 50 Bs. They bled too much HP on the crossing on the initial fight. Bolognese went very low, and then Elevate was holding the corner very well while they were killing the other side of the map. So even if they won this, Elevator will be able to get on towards that number one base, which really wouldn't have uh, that much for team efficiency. Canadian Impact coming in there in the 50B, picking up the double kill at the end. Nicely done there by Team Elevate. Still had a lot of HP on the board as well, and quite a convincing win for the first round here on Himmelsdorf. Yeah, quite a convincing win. Ox Matis and Brett on the crossing there doing a decent amount of damage. And then the counter push from Team Efficiency, if they want to do it like that, they need more tanks, they need an overmatch. In the beginning, they, did ha they didn't have one. And every time the tanks were crossing, they took more damage. Party went down below half HP rather quickly. And they just didn't have enough armor. They needed really stuff there almost to uh, get around that corner because Elevate got the first shots. They obviously pushing around the corner against uh, a team with more HP and more armor even, because they had all the mouses there, is not going to work out in terms of defending that cap very well. So a nice bait there from Elevate coming out on the on the first round. Their intention was never to cap. It was merely uh, uh, usage. Start the fight, yeah, yeah. It was just merely usage to start the fight. Uh, here's an interesting thing. That's two games now where we've, we've seen that the... Um, the defending team doesn't have someone to the right-hand side of the cap circle. Now that's something we see a lot in the EU teams. People teams tend to have like a T10 or something there. Matorius goes there all the time. He dies there all the time. But it does allow for cap resets. Why do you think teams haven't done that? Because it was actually, I believe, Elevate were the other team that didn't have a tank there either when they got like capped out. We have seen what happens then, though. Uh, exactly. Even with Navi, they, 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 the only reason they won is because. Anatolic survived, they had a yeah. nice four over there, and he died. The, the thing is, five line and even HE spam from the six seven line it really deals with a tank rather quickly. Get and the damage blocked here by external, really yeah. nicely done. Very he well was, done. He was the one, the main one on the corner, drilling out there. Canadian Impact certainly playing his worth in AMX 50B, 3.2k damage there. Ox Manthus uh, doing pretty much 3k damage in the Mouse. Uh, exceptional play again. He is certainly one of the star players of Elevate. You would expect him to carry that way. Um, Scale only doing four, six, eight damage is not so yeah, great. Not having a not very having a very good time in uh, in this battle so far. Uh, Mao actually doing more in that Scorpion G. Kind of disappointing from uh, team efficiency, but obviously hoping for them to bounce back in the second round. Uh, this was the first round. Himmelsdorf attack is considered a little bit easier almost than than defending because of the the way the positioning works out the defender has to kind of go down one two line has to kind of give up those positions and uh, elephant making it work yeah yeah and um, i mean himmelstorf can sometimes be a, a one for one map so it's always interesting to see which teams come out on top of the other one and um, if someone can take a two nil lead obviously at the start it always is a, a big thing it's like a, a kind of comfort zone a buffer zone if you like and and certainly teams can take a bit of confidence for that but it's very easy for teams to drop a two nil lead as well yeah i mean we have seen it multiple times around throughout the seasons as well where the team picks up on the first map to zero obviously winning both rounds but then Usually that happens to be one of their better maps, and then the next map, usually, well, you pick always, like, if the, the, the opponent picks their best map, you pick your best map, but the, the, the second team wins the, the map to zero. The biggest issue comes from uh, losing a map to zero and then losing the next round. When you're on 3-0, it's a completely different story than 2-0. Oh, Daki. T95 Elevate's been <laughs> experimenting with this throughout the season. They have tried it, tried it on mines as well, if I'm not wrong, trying to... Uh, make that work. Oh, so. two IS fours as well. It's a very, very heavy lineup. Obviously, C95 so much armor to have to go through there. Yeah, they can defend. They can put a tank on that A7 position though this time as well because they can cover yeah. the five line very effectively. You can do that with IS4. Armor. This is a, a park the bus. Tank. Big time. This is big time. You know, we're not going anywhere. Um, we know exactly where we're going to be, and you're going to come and get us now. I've seen some regions using the T-85. It's never been used in Europe on Himmelsdorf. Um, it got used once on Steps, and uh, not on Steps, on Prokhorovka, and it got played terribly. Um, double IS-4, I don't recall ever really seen before either. I certainly have seen one IS-4 being used for the, the number two base defense, but I'm going to be really interested to see how this goes, because like I say, it's a lot of armor to get through. That's the biggest problem.
Yeah, there's a ton of HP as well. They are even up over the efficiency. Well, the nice shot there from Party. Uh, Canadian Impact's gonna have to pay a Zamorak. That's 90 seconds of uh, repair kit, not yep. usable. Uh, but still, elevate up in HP no matter what, and that is impressive seeing as the lineup from Team Efficiency is very, very heavy as well. Yeah, it's like two super, super heavy teams here. Now, Bog needs the scale sent down at the bottom, down the church are blind firing up the middle roads, but there's gonna be no one taking that bait. Now, I'm interested to see how it's going to play out from here, Daki. How do you think it's going to go? Well, we can see. Let's go. Just, let's just talk about the strategy from Elevate, right? We have the T95 here together with the mouse. The T95 will sit in front of the mouse. That will cover off this area. You have a mouse here. He can either spot this over here, but he doesn't have to right now because of the position from our dear friend over here, which spots this entire eight-line crossing. He will spot zero line, so they see whatever comes down here. Now, why two is force? is the question, because the second IS-4, IS-4 works really well when side scraping. That's why they put him in this position, because from here, he can easily hold this area, and let's just say there's not going to be a good way for uh, team efficiency to take him out. Then we have the buffer trigger over here, who can be used for multiple things. Obviously, very accurate gun, sniping down here, but you can also, for example, come down here, and then again, shoot the zero line position. Last, but not least, we have our friend the mouse over here. Because of the position from this mouse, that I just marked with a little X. Zoma, yeah. He is very safe and he can just side scrape off of the buildings here and can again spot down here. Because obviously Miles has decent view range and can actually look all the way towards the K-line. Okay, now if you are team efficiency, how do you break this down? Well, the real, the real question is you need to draw elevate across the map, right? The T95, the thing is about the T95 and the mouse and A7 is when they start capping on base number two, the T95 will come around the corner first and probably uh, smack the guy capping for 750 and then uh, the mouse will come behind him like they're doing on the A-line right now. Uh, the question is, if they make a mouse shield on the on that number two base, would it be effective enough? Because we have seen a mouse can cover that cap pretty much fully, and a, 12, a batch at 12T could probably sit there safe behind him. Mm -hmm. That could be a way to, to bait Elevate around the corner, but you would have to take the, the A0 position because you want to punish those two tanks if they turn around. Ma is playing with fire here. He's slowly edging forward, but wall hacks. And there is a tank over his shoulder, and Maw could get absolutely deleted in just a second once they see him standing yeah, cap this is, a, this is a good start, though, from team efficiency. Safa needs to be careful. When Maw starts the cap, he doesn't really have to be shielded, but the issue is if uh, Wallax loads HG, um, all of tanks will reload HG to reset. He will one-shot this uh, batch at 12 feet, more than likely, at uh, 750 alpha with normal. And HG would be 950 plus, I guess, or around 950. Don't quote me on that. I don't shoot HG ammunition in my T95. Uh, but that is the issue. If Ma gets connected, everybody else, yes, from Team Efficiency is lining up to shoot the five-line crossing. But the thing is, with the tanks from A7, Elevate, no doesn't, Elevate doesn't need to cross the five-line. This is, this is the thing. They don't need to cross it. They have external and wall hacks waiting for a cap to start. You'll see wall hacks or external. External is reloading HP. He's reloading HP yep. right now. He's going to slash him and he's going to reset. Canadian gets out of Amorak once more, He's again without repair kit. Again, poor lad, he's getting shot, double tapped in the side of the turret. And the left hand side of the turret is the weak spot for the mouse if you can get it flush. Um, Amorak twice, had he not repaired the first one, he would have been, um, it would have been a massive explosion there and he would have been dead. That would have been quite cool. Um, here comes the reset coming it's in. It's HG ammunition loaded on the 50B. It's an HG clip. Cheeky, so it's going to stop external from resetting the cap. long enough for more. Um, party is not going to do a lot of damage here, it's just going to be annoying for external because it's going to keep him tracked. It did a decent amount knowing that the IS-4 has 2500 HP. That is uh, a lot of that gone actually for an HE clip. He's obviously, hopefully not going to be reloading another one of those. Dodomo's going to push across, he's going to get clipped out and he does so when he gets spotted out. He's going to have to stop and pull back. Took one shot and didn't carry on. Scales moved up into the middle for courtyard control, JT's behind him. Gronovsky can come over behind him, he's in the AMX 50B, so he's full clip. Now, there was a reset, obviously, at one point. Yeah, there's splash HP. damage beside Maw, yeah. yeah. Um, what I don't understand is why the elevator is even giving up HP at this point. Right. I should peek there from external, needs to be careful, give one to Party. Party obviously trying to do damage, but Party has no support. Party needs uh, a heavier tank, such as, as the mouse over there, to cover him. Bolognese is pushing up against Nets to try and get rid of him so they can try and get a bit of control over that left hand side of the map. Now, Dodoma is being focused on the crossing here, but there's not enough guns quite ready to shoot him. 
He's through, he's safe now, and this is a problem of team efficiency. The, the, the trap they had set there to try and take out someone in the cross, and it didn't work. They didn't track him, they didn't get all the shots in. Actually, I'd say that this was a really good trade for team efficiency almost. To push out Safa, um, Elevate would have to commit more than just one tank. They will have to commit multiple tanks, a T95 and external as well. Safa will be probably trying to make a run for it, knowing that this is an option as well. But now the reaction from team efficiency needs to come out, though. They can't just give up 3,200 HP for free. Safi is going to get surrounded here by three tanks. He gets another shot into Ox Mathis, which is quite nicely done. Canadian Impact getting shot on the other side of the map. He's tracked. He has repaired it, but he's going nowhere in a hurry. Ball is getting shot again. JT's taking damage as Safi is taking damage now as well. He is getting triple teamed at the moment, but look at all the damage being done to Elevate. In the meantime, Elevate is actually losing damage across all their tanks. Safi surviving for quite a long time here and holding up four tanks here from Elevate in the meantime. Yeah, holding up four tanks, but Wallax will probably finish him. Safi should probably have gotten on the side of the T95 as he does now, but they've lost party, they've lost Bolognese as well. These are the positions from Elevate that are very hard to counter, but they're doing an okay job so far. They need to kill Nitz though, and then the game will just about be even. God Emperor Brett will try to do what he can before he goes down, but that's a nice shot from Scale. Probably will get traded though. Nope. Ricochet right in there from God Emperor Brett. It is four guns to six. Nix, uh, Nix, sorry, one more hit and he's going to go down. Um, God Scale takes a hit there trading with God Emperor Brett. Moa and JT are trying to get Nix down without taking more damage. But JT takes another hit as Granovsky gets the kill on God Emperor Brett. Scale now holding this corner. Externals coming down the bottom. This is actually a nice little uh, rope a dope here. Was everyone else from Elevate going in the top? Okay, so let's talk about this lineup from Elevate now. It's a very slow one. They need to push on towards Scale. Granovsky needs to get in position to cover that mouse, oh, but nice Scale is tap. too far forward. It gets taken down. The cap has started, which was the thing they had to rely on because they they had the quicker setup. They needed to, to do damage towards these two mouses, and now Granovsky by himself does not have the damage to do so. Groski is going to clip out into, he only had three shots there, he gets uh, one into Ox and backs off. Now, look at this from External coming around on the back, he has enough HP to go straight here. Um, one shot going in, one shot misses. Second shot goes in, he gets dead. Ox Manthus gets a double kill on Maw, there's only Gronovski left, he's on a reload. He certainly doesn't have enough um, HP to trade, and well, he's just going to get pressured by the, the triple mouse here. He's in like, possibly the worst place he could be right now to try and run. Well, there's also a T95 going to come around the corner soon, TM. Yeah. So, let's just say he's in uh, big trouble. Supplies. 7-3-5. T95 didn't really work out our throughout this game. It didn't work out, but at the end of the day, he's still alive. Um, considerable amount of health left on him. Elevate four tanks surviving and taking it to now. Yeah, um, reaction from team efficiency. Safa surviving for a long time, that's fine. There's a few issues there. Uh, party for one, if you're the only tank, uh, like external side scripts doesn't see anybody else. Doesn't see a mouse, which is there usually. So he's just okay. I'll peek out and give Party two shots of damage, which uh, honestly is on Party's fault because a good player will realize there's no support and just punish you for that play. Um, the reaction on one two line was fine, but they lost too many times for it to begin with. Uh, they lost Bolognese, which is unaccept which is unacceptable. Uh, second of all, Nitz survived for such a long time. If they wanted to put and bring the pain towards Elevate, they needed to clean up Nitz rather quickly. They needed to kill God Emperor Brett as quickly as well. I don't understand what the, the Bacha 12T is doing against the Nice 4, why yeah. he's not rushing the rails as, as soon as they realize this, taking down that Waffentrager together with Skell. Mouse still had some HP left at that point in time, because uh, then the cap would have been on, and then Elevate would have struggled, because the issue for their lineup is what we talked about, drawing across the map. They had four tanks drawn towards the eastern side. If they can kill one, two line quickly, get back onto the cap, then they win, because of the Obviously, the lineup being too slow, uh, but yeah. the scale as well. If there's if there's four tanks forward. going after one mouse, then it gives you a huge opening on on the other side yeah. of the map that they should be taking advantage of. But they weren't quite ready for it. They weren't quite reacting to it for some reason. Now, damage done, damage blocked is going to be quite interesting in this round because there was a lot of quite heavy trading there. Um, wow, from Safi. Safi, holy moly! He did very well there in that position. Could have done maybe a little bit more damage, but. Uh, other than that, pretty strong performance from him, but external nits, nits surviving for so long, 3.6k damage really shouldn't happen. Uh, we didn't see what happened over there, there must be some miscommunication. Yeah, it was, it was strange because Nitz was in the, what was it, IS-4, yeah, and he was, and he was able to himself. survive in that, that area for a very long time, and I, I thought he would have gone down much, much quicker, but him holding up the, others, the other teammates, you know, uh, when Safi was just like saying, you know, 
getting multiple shots. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of really threw a spanner in the works because they couldn't just drive past them because then they're going to get shot in the rear. Um, unfortunate there for team efficiency. Um, Elevate playing that one very nicely, very, very yep. nicely indeed. Um, we're going to go into Ghost Town next, another um, city map. I wonder if we're going to get any surprise lineups from Elevate, something new. Again, it would be cool to see, but I'm thinking business is normal. Multiple Mouses, T57s, AMX 50Bs perhaps. Well, uh, double bot, triple mouse, and double WZ for the side of team efficiency. This is something I think uh, EL Gaming himself also played, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong in that one. But obviously, Elevate, double mouse, T57, Type 5 heavy, Batchat and double WZ. Um, now, this is going to be interesting, especially because uh, Team Efficiency is attacking with this lineup and Elevate is defending. But double WZ usually means something at least semi aggressive to take some map control. Yeah. They could also do the, the split tactic with putting one of the WZs towards that K1 position. But I, I don't know if I'm a real fan of that. Yeah, I mean. The WZs always give them a lot of, of flexibility. Sometimes it can make it look like you're going to do one thing and, and do the other. Now, Elevate on the blue side are going to be defending. Team Efficiency on the red side are going to be attacking. Now, God Emperor Brett gets himself spotted in T57 Heavy. Looks like Safi perhaps got that spot as he was going over. Canadian Impact uh, spots out uh, JT as they spot each other here. That's what the little bulb means that the tank is spotted and the name popping up in yellow means they're spotted. Uh, JT, the symbol is there beside his name at the bottom of the screen. The cross means that that's how much damage he's done. The shield means how much damage he's blocked. And the little target symbol means how much damage assist he's done. So that means somebody else doing damage with his spotting. So far, fairly standard setup though from the side of team efficiency. I hope that's not going to be a K-line push for them because there's, well, actually, um, bad shot, five shots, WZ and a mouse, but the T-57 is relocating as well, which is God Emperor Brett. Now, I don't think K-Line push is something that Efficiency will be able to pull off effectively, as there will just be too much fire there available from the side of Elevate. Uh, they could prove me wrong and go for it, but I just don't feel like it's going to work out. I think they spotted out Wallax now as well and deciding to back off, because it's not just something that's going to work out. Yeah, we're looking at the view viewpoint here of Wallhacks as he's covering the H-Line, looking towards uh, Safi's area. Nets at the top on the minimap, you can see has coverage completely off base one, nowhere near looking at him. Black and and Scale backing off here in the middle, JT just moving across the area. Right beside actually external 007, but not close enough to spot him. Well, let's just talk about the tactic again first from Elevate, pointing out what their plan is. So you leave the WZ here, because there's a gap here where you can see tanks coming. So you get an early, uh, early spot, right? Type 5 here, because he can trade with mouses that would come in this area. The reason why we saw a lot of batches here before and not anymore is because you can defend from here towards that. And, and usually when you see this, you will rotate away, but team efficiency have chosen for the aggressive push like this over here, and they might still counter push across K-Line if they feel like it. At the same time though, they will have to put pressure from more than one side. Usually we see the attacker when they spot out a position returning itself towards the cap because the defender does not really climb up somebody with this lineup, but elevate in this equation has chosen to climb a bad shot up there. So Team Efficiency have a few choices here available towards them. Obviously, the least likely one is to go in towards this capture search over here. Uh, but the push like this is not really going to work. I would like to see them do the rotation towards this number one base because this is what has been working already a few times throughout uh, this, this Grand Finals, please. See external taking a shot there and he immediately used his health back because he was down a commander there, so he needs to get that back in the game as quick as possible. Your commander gives you various different skills, and losing him is actually one of the worst things that can happen to a tank in this game. Yeah, so far, good stuff from Team Efficiency. Not really uh, losing too much HP, external. Eh, well, as I say, that party takes a shot, and so does external. But so far, so good from the side of Team Efficiency. I would still like to see them rotate away from that one two lane area. I really think it's too well defended by the side of Elevate to make a play there. There is Wallhacks, there's God Emperor Brett, there is External as well. Now Nitz in his WZ is relocating there as well. That puts four tanks to cover one two line. The eastern side, the number one base, you should see them make a similar play uh, as, as Navi did, which is putting the mouse on there, covering double WZ. Um, this this, this play from, from 
team efficiency, I just don't feel like it's going to work out. Ma, Ma got super lucky there. He got hit by Oxmathis and it damaged his gun and his commander's viewport. Um, so lucky there. Um, that could have been quite significant bigger hit. Well, Oxmathis now driving up, trying to get himself safe. He will be. But obviously that Type 5 turret, not impregnate. Impenetrable. Impenetrable. Yeah. Impregnable. Impregnable, obviously. Impenetrable, yeah. yeah. The Type 5 heavy flat surface, that cupola is penable as well. And if you go, <laughs> as uh, expected, <laughs> that cupola is like, uh, penable and flat surfaces when looking at them. On a 9 will obviously becomes harder. The thing is, he can peek right over and, you know, get shot in with his shell and do some module damage or some crew damage. Wallhax getting shot on the other side of the map. Actually, they're pushing Gronovsky down the bottom as well. He is going over there with Safi, it looks like, to try and get the drop and to get the angle on Wallhack. So there's trades happening all over the site here. This is the main fight happening. Oxmanthus is almost going to get dropped. He is a pretty much a one-shot for one of these tanks. As Maud is going to try and push up on him. Now, Party is getting focused at the moment. He was tracked. He's ammo racked. Now, he goes down. That is really nicely played. Doma getting the kill on him. At the same time, Wallhack kills Safi. So the push from team efficiency looks like it's being stopped by Elevate. Nips next is up. Nitz has dropped down to 49 health, Wallhacks dropped down to 79, but there's still guns in the game right now, and it is, well, it is um, 6 to 5 at the moment, Daki. Yeah, not going that well for team efficiency. I did say that that K-line play, I don't think it's the option out of this one. They did decide to go for it, they lost a lot of HP on the crossing, Party was left by himself on the backside of the cap. As soon as Elevate saw this opportunity, Canadian Impact driving through the cap, clipping uh, Party from the side, from the back, he's now coming in for some more even. Uh, that's the issue, Party left alone, you lose a mouse, the Batras don't get to do anything really. I don't think Ronowski and uh, Safa had any role in this round. Uh, I, I, I have to disagree with the play that Team Efficiency brought. And it happened all really quickly as well. They still finished with six tanks on the board. Okay, multiple tanks were on low health there, but I mean, you kind of need to focus those tanks. You need well, to make sure you get that tank out of the game. If you want to kill Oxmatis in that Type 5 Heavy, the, the ramp next to where the mouse is playing, uh, the mouses were on the lower side. On the right-hand side of it, you have a little bit of a ramp area where you can peek from and actually shoot that Type 5 effectively with a tank that has a strong armor, such as a WZ. Obviously, because of Wallhack's position in the 1 2 line, you have an angle towards that position and you can not actually do anything against that Type 5 effectively. It will take two mouses a long, long time to kill one Type 5 heavy because they obviously need to hit the Coppola time and time again and elevate. It wasn't going to wait for that. They already pushed on towards party. The Bachas were crossing the Kalen at the same time with a T57 and a WZ over there. There's just nothing to be gained for, for, for team efficiency on that side of the map. I really did feel like the number one base was more of an opportunity for them than in the play they went with. Yep, so Elevate now sitting 3-0 up. We're going to go into round two here on Ghost Town, which could see Elevate going on to match point. Um, I would like to see a bit of a longer game. I mean, it would be a real surprise to see our third 5-0 uh, of the day, considering how some of the matches went yesterday. There were some longer matches um, compared to what we get today. Let's have a look at the damage done in that round. We can also see the damage blocked, um, who came out on top for the kills as well and shots. Um, wow, 3.7 there from JT in the WZ. Yeah, he, he did well, but look at that. There's five elevate players after that, all very consistent. Um, like I said, Party, Safa, didn't really Safi, get to do much. Safi and Ibacha as well, you'd expect to do significantly better than that. Now, round two here, we see um, external 1132, Mouse, T57 Heavy, Bacha, two WZs. Now, the lineup from Team Efficiency kind of tells us aggressive because they cannot actually defend the number one base that Tiernan Bacha just lacks the penetration, lacks the heat ammunition, which obviously doesn't lose, penet lose penetration over distance to reset that base effectively. So um, this, this stays, team efficiency can't really wait for Elevate because I feel like Elevate right now, the best play for them almost is to put external nits and wall hacks on towards the cap like we saw Kazna crew do against uh, EL Gaming uh, with less success obviously but Elevate might be able to pull it off. It's like a strong push here for the cap circle, Daki. They're kind of relying on the fact that team efficiency might be out of position. Triple cap coming in here, I think, for a cap rush, and then they're just going to hold off the fight on the corner. Safi is moving up into position where he can cover one tank in, the next two tanks in behind them, and this is Elevate 
being quite bold here, knowing that they don't have any additional coverage, and they're going to try and tie them up um, to stop the, the push coming around 5 and 6 line for the reset. It's a very similar play towards what Kazna crew did, Safa. He's Coppola sniping with H3 ammunition. He's going to have to get some resets from that position, and it's just going to be very hard because nobody else right now is in position. He's literally the only tank, and he's going to take a ton of damage for this. While well, the rest of the team efficiency side is still rotating right now. It's all on to stop to get the resets, really. Safi needs to get a reset here because the tanks in the middle can hold up everyone else. We are down to 5 seconds. There is a reset coming in back to 15 seconds. Now they're going to have to shoot a different tank. Look at this, Wallhacks is already backing off out of the tank, he, out of the circle, so he wants to push it onto Safi. Now, an overlap trying to come around to the back from Wall. He's going to be held up by Canadian Impact, it looks like. Elevate really are in a strong position right now with this fight in the middle of the map. Yeah, Elevate is in a strong position, but they are going to be using three tanks to take down Safa pretty much. In the meantime, they should lose the Doma, but Team Efficiency just seems to be losing trade after trade. They've lost party now as well. Oxmath is going to give a shot, get around the corner, get safe again. And uh, Gronowski can't do anything about it because his T57 is on a one shot. Elevate is just winning the trade time and time again. Down to individual plays while I tell you this is what we see when it comes to Ghost Town. A lot of it is um, business is normal for a lot of tanks, they have a lot of teams here, but they know what to do and it just comes down to who has the most experience, who plays against the higher caliber teams and who can avoid the shots. JT and Bolognese are stuck against four tanks here trying to survive that wither of fire. It's not going to go well for them. God Emperor Brett has a full clip. He's instead going to start shooting at Skell. Skell gets dropped to JT and Bolognese on less than 1,000 HP each. More coming around. Ox Mathis coming around from the side. A flank shot into JT there. I thought he's perhaps going to go into Bolognese. Really nice target priority there from Ox Mathis. And there we have left only more against five guns from Elevate. Yeah, the trades are just in favor of team, um, not team efficiency, sadly. Oh, okay. God, Emperor Brett. Hold. Uh, didn't get it. External just bit. takes it off and picks up his triple kill. But yeah, Elevate go in there for the oh, option we highlighted in the beginning, the triple cap, because obviously team efficiency does not have a tank that can climb available towards them, which is usually AMX 30, even a tier 10 Bacha, but a tier 9 Bacha will just not do it. Uh, Safa then being forced to continue pushing forwards to get those resets, went down to 300 HP before he even saw what happened in the fight. In the meantime, Gronowski peeking the corner, getting clipped out by God Emperor Brett as well. That's another. That's already two trades being lost uh, for almost no return. Then Party went down. It, it, it just didn't get any better for team efficiency. They weren't they weren't winning any side of the map, and it's, it's mainly not even due to reactions, just due to trades. Yeah, it was a, a fairly quick round, that one. Ox Mathis again, showing why we point him out as being one of the top players for the region. He's currently almost on 5k damage there, only blocking one shot, so he needed to. Bolognese blocking the exact same shot as well. Yeah, Bolognese, pretty well done for him, but again, five players from Elevate on the first page. Um, Safa, just not having a good time Safa, in this one. Poor Safa. Uh, but he's also being put in positions where he really can't do much now. Yeah. He was the only one that was able to reset the cap. He was the only one that's going to reset the cap even, because nobody else was in position. Everybody else was trying to counter push. Now, if you are team efficiency and you have three guys on the cap and you're losing one guy, you need to make sure that your trades on the other side of the map where you have a 6v4 need to be on point. Now, the difference is they weren't. Uh, Tanks from Elevate survived too long, Oxmatis even ran away, took a scenic route around the map, drove through the cap, and this again comes down to the traits from uh, team efficiency not being important, because if Granowski doesn't lose 1.9k HP on his T57 heavy, then he is able to block off Oxmatis from running away. For example, Ox tries to do the same play with Granowski high HP, Granowski just clips them out, that's a dead mouse. Yep, now we're going to go into Muruvanka. This could be it done and dusted here. It can be decided. This could be the end of team efficiency and the grand finals dream. I'm sure Elfish Guy is going to be just a little bit upset that one of his boys are not going to be taking any further part in the battle. Now we can see the lineups here. Daki, anything kind of stand out here for you has been unusual? Uh, yeah, as in not correct. <laughs> this looks very much like the vehicles we just saw in the previous round, so that's not what we're going to be seeing here. Um, multiple bat chats obviously being used. Wallhacks coming out in a Hawk 12. IS4 for Nitz. Ox Mathis again in the mouse. He certainly is a beast in that tank. So, mouse has four bat shots in the light for the side of Elevate, but they're actually going to take some map control with that because of the heavy lineup from Team Efficiency. They expect them to be going towards the eastern side. Now, there's perhaps a mistake being made because JT, Party, Bolognese, and Skell 
are just sitting on one two line. They might be waiting for somebody even to go into E1, but they got spotted out. They might be waiting for God Emperor Bread. He will be in E1. Maybe they can blind fire him. But four heavies here. The uh, rest of the tanks from Team Efficiency just taking some control of the eastern side. This is actually not that bad for Team Efficiency, but they can't lose too much just with these heavies pushing up. So, part of this is important. Bolognese and Scale getting imported. Bolognese. Wohax um, spotted, and he's having to back off. That will let them know that there's no one potentially south, but Canadian Impact is down in that area. Yeah, but it's not as effective as sitting in the bushes with the uh, Bachats as it is with the Hog. But obviously, Elevate realized this uh, march of uh, heavy tanks is coming towards their base, and it's going to be trying to take control of the eastern side very quickly. Obviously, E7, E8. Taking those positions will allow you to shoot those tanks in the side. Uh, use this position in random battles all the time for unaware heavies. It's, uh, it's amazing. They just don't even know that you're farming them from the side. You need division to be able to do that, though. You need someone to spot the base. Yeah, but Nitz has now pushed them towards these buildings as well. So how Team Efficiency plans on capping this, I'm not sure. They're going to take so much damage, because look at Elevator and how aggressive they're going in the 6-7 line. Wallhax is spotted. He's tracked. He's going to go down here if they can keep shooting at him at the moment. He took one, then he got tracked. Now he's repaired the tracks. He's coming off reload. Ma is being focused on the other side. He gets dropped by an external. God Emperor Brett taking a couple of damage to focus into him. Wow, he went down almost so quickly there. One more shot and he's going to go down. That's really nice fire there for team efficiency. But Gronowski's taking a lot of damage. JT is getting a lot of damage as well. He's almost dropped by Elevate. Elevate have only taken damage effectively on three tanks. They are still in a really strong position right now and it is not looking good for team efficiency. No, Elevate is just too much map control. They finally cleaned out Brett, but look at the HP. Deficit is completely gone. Elevate is wiping the floor with team efficiency. It's uh, safe to say that. Good rotation from them, taking the eastern side, getting in the faces of team efficiency before they make their play, because I guess they wanted to counter Brett like they did. Yep. But Grinovsky saw they couldn't finish him as they had to run away from the bad shots from Elevate. And now Elevate look to close their match 5-0. It's looking like another 5-0, and sadly that's going to be team efficiency going out, just like Eclipse they are down 5-0 in both of their matches. That also means we know who's going to be playing in another group, which is going to be um, EL Gaming are going to be playing against um, Elevate on Saturday, so that's going to be a really interesting match to look forward to. Um, well played by Elevate, exceptional. They have been very, very strong in these matches against Team Efficiency. They were favourites to win this one. Um, a great way to bounce back after the defeat from Not So Serious. Um, they're on cleanup duty at the moment. Bolognese is currently uh, the remaining tank with Scale. They're focusing into Bolognese, then Scale's going to follow quick after that. So, yeah, unfortunately for Team Efficiency, the, the grand final dreams are now at an end. They can now. Watch from the sidelines and, and you know just enjoy the, the moment. And surely it's, it's a learning experience for them as well. First international tournament. Very sad, 5-0 uh, for them. Not getting a single win during this grand finals. Sometimes it is what it is. Elevate bouncing back from their uh, loss against NSS, taking the second place in the group. We'll be moving on, as you said, in towards the playoffs against EL Gaming, which will be a tough opponent, no matter what. Good stuff there from Elevate. Really good rotation in this last round as well. Yep. Um, and we have an American team out of the group stages.